Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, if you didn't see the last video, then you probably don't know what I'm about to do. And what I'm about to do is undo all the work that I just did over the weekend. I got everything assembled, uh, well, everything assembled. We got the crankshaft in, we got all six uh, pistons in, um, and I went to give it a celebra celebratory rotation on the crank, and it will rotate 359 degrees, but it will not rotate 360 degrees. And let me just show you what that looks like. That's as far over as it'll go. And then it stops right there again. So, uh, I've checked the clearances on all the rods, thinking uh, the connecting rods, thinking that maybe that's it. That doesn't appear to be it. Interestingly enough, um, the paddles that are on the crankshaft, I'm fairly sure one of them is actually bottoming out over on the um, very back side around the six cylinder. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is actually taking out every one of these pistons one at a time. Uh, I'm trying to do a test crank just to make sure that it isn't one of the pistons that's actually uh, making it stop. Um, and then uh, from there, hopefully once all the pistons are out, I'll be able to see what's actually binding and we'll go from there. So here we go. Uh, back to disassembling this thing again. So this is the spot that I've been thinking is the problem. You can see that at some point in time someone ground out um, an area in here uh, to make it so that the um, paddles on the crankshaft can actually pass by. And it was my belief that this was the spot and this is what was keeping it from rotating. However, on closer inspection, I could see that the paddle was passing by it without any issue and this wasn't the problem. So I decided to stop and take another look and see if I could figure a different place that might be binding up. So at this point, since it wasn't the first spot that I thought it was, I decided that I would start backing out uh, additional parts and seeing what else I could remove that would free things up. As I started to remove the first L bracket, I immediately figured out where my problem was coming from. Here's a closer look at that L bracket that I'm talking about. And if you see right where this arrow is pointing, there's a chamfer or uh, sort of like a, a cut into the side of the L bracket. That cut is what gives clearance for the uh, paddles to uh, go by and clear that L bracket. And this is where my problem was coming from. This becomes much more clear if we look at it from under here with the camera. You can see right in here is where it was binding. Um, and so 
it's uh, very clear once I switch this over you'll see it in another uh, frame in a few minutes where you can actually see how it'll clear much better but this is what it was binding on right here the whole time so a very quick flip of the bracket like so and the problem is solved All that's left at this point is to reattach uh, the bracket, tighten down the bolts, uh, and the problem is solved and I can move on. A quick spin of the crank to make sure that I was right before I tighten everything down. And it looks like we're now good. As you can see, it's moving freely. We'll just torque these down and we can get back to actually rebuilding the engine again. If we take a look now at that same uh, gap and same area where I was hitting before, you can now very clearly see how uh, the paddle is able to move past it and there's a ton of clearance there. So. Uh, successfully fixed and uh, I've learned my lesson about uh, going through and and making sure to check tolerances on things uh, as I build this all right well there you go uh, first of what will probably be many mistakes I will make when doing this um, but I figured it out and luckily it doesn't have to go back to the machine shop um, I guess the, the big lesson that I've learned here is, uh, especially when it comes to uh, rotational parts that um, have multiple different things attaching to them um, and have multiple different pieces around it, um, every time you go through a step, uh, make sure that you go ahead and give it a full crank um, or move it around as much as you can. Uh, if I had done that every step of the way, I would have known that um, I didn't have to pull the pistons. Um, and in fact, I wish should have been able to find it really easily because if I had done that every single time, those uh, stay uh, pieces were the last thing that I put on before I decided to celebrate and give it a crank, only to find out that it wouldn't turn. So I could have very easily backed those out and figured it out from there. So um, yeah, like I say, my first mistake of many in rebuilding this thing. Uh, luckily, it didn't end up being too big a deal. Uh, hopefully, you know, again, if people are watching this as they're uh, trying to rebuild their own engines, something to watch out for. It was a very easy mistake to make, uh, and it cost me at least six hours, probably eight by the time I put everything back together and get back to the state that I was before I figured out it wasn't free spinning. Uh, so with that, um, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, leave your comments down below. Um, and if you have any suggestions on other things that I should be doing as I'm putting this thing together uh, so maybe I don't have to learn them the hard way, please uh, leave that down below. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, with that, we'll see you next time.